Hello, my family. A couple more weeks. A couple more weeks, and it's about to be fall. I'm excited. I have waited a while. Sorry, y'all. I know many of you love your summer. I am just a cool type of woman. I like the cool weather, mainly because since I lost my thyroid, hot seems hotter than I can tolerate. And when we're in the heat of hell, I was not comfortable. We are finally just warm temps. Thank you, God. We are starting to cool off. And with that comes in mind of, I am so ready for fall. I'm about to show you right quick. It's getting to be fall, y'all. And we've got some amazing dishes ahead of us. So, let's get started. Okay, my family. So, today... I am going to be making something. I've seen it quite often. I've honestly never tried it. And I'm going to be making what's called cracked chicken. Um, I'm going to serve ours on a keto low carb bun. I am going to be doing some variations to this recipe to add it and kick it up a notch basically. So um, I'm going to be taking you on the journey of preparing this because this is going in my slow cooker. Y'all, I'm not slaving at the stove today. I'm going to let the slow cooker do it for me. And I have just the right amount of uh, crock pot that is made for two people. I'm also, now there is one I am going to slave over the stove with. It's something I have been wanting so badly. And it's been about a year and a half since I had any of these. So... I am going to go ahead and make some soft pretzels. I absolutely love my soft pretzels. So what I'm going to do is instead of making the whole thing, honestly I don't need to make that, oh, that beautiful form of a pretzel, but I'm going to turn mine into pretzel bites. And then once I'm done I will be freezing them and then just having them periodically when I feel like having one. I may go ahead and make one or two pretzels out of it too, but for the most part I'm going to be doing my pretzel bar bites and then we'll be doing the baking soda um, coating with it, the bath, and then I'm going to be dousing them with butter afterwards. So I'm going to take you through that and show you how to make your own soft pretzels. I have not been to Annie's in so, so many years. We don't have an Annie's around here. And frankly, Walmart soft pretzels just don't cut it for me. I make my own homemade. And I'm going to tell y'all, I have not bought any since. And I absolutely enjoyed them. Matter of fact, back when I started up my business, Many people from our community absolutely loved my soft pretzels because, well, we just don't get them around here. So, we're going to be doing that. So, let's have some fun in the kitchen today. I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to enjoy myself and we're going to enjoy each other's company while we're in the kitchen. So, let's get started first with setting up our crock pot for our cracked chicken, something we've never had before. The two sides that we're going to be serving with this will actually be the sugar-free coleslaw copycat of KFC, which I have a video on how to make that for y'all. I'm also doing a fake potato salad, basically using cauliflower instead of potatoes, and we're going to have that with our cracked chicken. So, quick, simple, still kind of summery because, well, we're not exactly into fall yet, but it gives me the kind of hint sense that fall is coming using the crock pot. So let's get started. Okay y'all, so what I'm understanding, this is a very simple type of recipe. So it is just for two people. So I'm gonna be adding two chicken breasts to this crock pot, just like so. I have a couple, well, I don't even know how that happened. We ended up with a couple packs of cream cheese open, so instead of opening up another pack, I'm going to actually add those packs to this and use them up. And then if I need some later on to add more to it, I'm going to add it to this pot later. So in the meantime, just for now, I am actually going to use a jar, which I'm using half this recipe. So basically it's um, chicken breast, about four chicken breast. We needed uh, four cups of broth, 
to which I am not going to use that much. So, like I said, I'm cutting everything down. And I'm going to be using two cups of this broth. If I need to add more later, I, I, that's the easy part of this. I can always add some more later. But I am using my own home canned. It's a turkey stock bone broth. It's healthy. And this is what I want in my mix. So we're going to go ahead and add that to it. Just kind of swirl around this mix in there. And then just add it to my little bitty crock pot. I love this thing, y'all. It's little, but it works. Now I'm going to add our cream cheese, which we should not have this many open. And I got to thinking, you know, I, although I've never had this, I can almost kind of imagine what it tastes like. And I'm wondering, my husband, he does an amazing smoked uh, cream cheese. I wonder how that would taste with this. And one day, I think I'm going to find out. If we actually like this, I'm going to ask him to smoke some of this for us and add it to this recipe. We'll try it with smoked cream cheese. That's how I am. I like to test things out. So, And I know I'm going to need more cream cheese than this. It calls for two 8-ounce packages, but that's not exactly 8 ounce for one but I will add some later on after this cooks down. The other kick it up a notch, I'm actually going to be adding some of these roasted diced green chilies to ours. So these are fire roasted. I'm actually going to strain this a little bit so I don't have too much liquid. And then we're going to add this in here. Hubby likes it a little bit spicy, so... This would probably be a really good idea. Now, I don't necessarily have a package of ranch mix, but just so y'all know, if you do like I do when we buy the bulk ranch mixes, each package of ranch has approximately two tablespoons of mix inside the packages. So, to get that same aspect, just use two tablespoons from your resource, whether it's homemade resource, uh, resources already made whatever it's two tablespoons so I'm going to add my two tablespoons of ranch mix to this after I break it up a little bit I think the next round instead of buying it pre-made I'm just going to make our own and I'm going to just add that in here real quick now I'm not going to add my cheddar cheese to this I will do that toward the end as well We'll get into all that when it gets time to that point. Right now, we're just going to be cooking the chicken, getting it flavored up, and then getting it to where we can basically shred it. I may end up seeing, I have other types of chicken in my freezer. Back when we did the stocks, I saved all those meat pieces, so I may even just be throwing that in here. This is why I save this stuff, y'all. Maybe it seems senseless to stock my freezer with all these little bits and pieces of things here and there but this is why I do it so when the time comes instead of adding more chicken breast or whatever I can just add those pieces get them out of my freezer voila dinner's made so now we're gonna go set this in our crock pot it says to cook it on low for six to eight hours I'm actually home all day so I'm probably gonna cook mine on high and it cut my time on this and then I can always drop it down low later so we're going to get this in the crock pot. We're going to get it started, get this cooking, and I am going to go get my farm work done. And then when we come back from that, the next step will be making some soft pretzel bites. I can't wait. We'll be right back. Okay, y'all. So utilizing the multitasking thing. I'm a, I need to let this rise anyways. So we're going to go ahead and fix up our dough and get it ready so that it can rest, rise, and then I can go do my farm work and then I won't have to worry about it no more. So first off, what I need to do is proof the yeast. So we need one cup of warm water, about 105, 110 degrees. I need two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. I like using the one I get from the Amish store. So, one, 
two and a quarter. And then I'm not sure, but a lot of these recipes use brown sugar. This one calls for two tablespoons of brown sugar. So yes, there will be sugar residue left on these um, pretzels. You can use regular sugar if you want. Uh, that's totally up to you. I'm going to try it. I've never tried it with the brown sugar. So we're going to go ahead and try it and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and get two tablespoons of brown sugar in this. And then I'm going to whisk this together and then let it sit and proof before I add my salt and my flour. It's really simple. So let me get the whisk. Now I'm going to let this sit aside about five to ten minutes. In the meantime, I have my butter at room temperature. We'll be using it melted anyway, so. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for about five, 10 minutes, allow it to come frothy, and then we'll start adding the next ingredients. Okay, y'all, so we have proofed beautifully. We got a nice fluffy or frothy uh, mix. So now we're gonna go ahead with the rest of our ingredients. The next step we're going to take is one teaspoon of salt. Now, what I plan on doing is, first of all, I'm going to put a little bit of flour. I don't exactly like putting salt on top of my yeast. Uh, I have learned, I have done that before. Many wouldn't think it would matter, but it kind of matters when it comes to rising. Salt has a way of being a Debbie Downer in yeast. So I try to like to put something over the top of it. So I'm going to put a little bit of my three and a half cups of flour that I'm going to use in this over the top so that I can put my salt on top of the flour. It gets mixed up in there, I understand, but I just don't like it to add it to this beautiful froth. So I'm just going to lightly take about a tablespoon or two over the top and then I'm going to add my one teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt. I'm going to sprinkle that on top. I need two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm going to put that on the top of this. And then we're going to go to our mixer and we are going to mix this up using about three and a half cups of flour enough to make it non-sticky so that we can come back and knead it for about five minutes. The kind we are making is the German uh, soft pretzels. So that's probably why it was using the brown sugar. I realized the German type, all their recipes uses brown sugar. So I'm gonna take this to the mixer. We're gonna get this mixed up and come back when we go to knead the dough. All right, y'all, so we did not use all of our three and a half cups. I got it to where it's not sticky, so I'm going to lightly flour my board because we're going to need this for about five minutes until it's smooth and elastic. So and then I still got some more flour in here. I'm going to add to this, so... One thing I will say that I that baffled me, absolutely baffled me. I have found out since I've been wanting to make my pretzels, I cannot find kosher salt anymore. Kosher salt has been used in a lot of chefs' kitchens, not just for pretzels. And when I found out I couldn't find any, I thought, holy smokes. I had to literally go on Amazon to order it. But to be honest with you, I still had a hard time finding it on Amazon. So, just so y'all know, um, if you can find a different source, I may look into just using regular Himalayan sea salt instead of kosher salt. So, let me find out what she's barking about so I can get this under control, y'all. I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, 
this really does not stick to me so I'm actually not going to use all of this flour. You can use up to three and a half cups and sometimes you may end up using a little more. Now where it comes into play for this, and that's like for many of us, basically it comes into our humidity range, the moisture in the air. Um, so many things come to play in baking. It depends on the flours that we use and all of this as well. So I'm just going to sit here and knead this. Now I will tell you the recipe called for all-purpose flour. Again, I didn't follow the rules. I use my own base flour. We have a 25 pound bag of bleached basically. I couldn't get unbleached but it's bleached bread flour and to me bread flours go for a lot of good bread sources. So I am actually going to try this with bread flour instead of all-purpose. I'm going to see how the structure works for this. So and it does stick just slightly so occasionally I'm coming through here using that same batch from the three and a half cups of flour and I'm just sitting here kneading this dough till I get a nice smooth elastic dough and then I will be oiling the dish that it came in and setting it aside to rest basically 15 well this one here is going to rest for an, a, about an hour to, or until it doubles in size. That could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to do. So that's when I will go and work on my farm work while this is rising. And that way my work is done and I can sit here and play with my pretzels, y'all, <laughs> basically. I love soft pretzels. I remember a little girl, Mama used to take us to the mall, and she'd always go to Annie's Pretzels. It was something that she loved. Me and my sister, we'd go to the mall with, with my Mama, and she'd always have pretzels with us, and we either ate them with mustard or we ate them with the cheese sauce. They were always so good, and that was fond memories that I had with my Mama and that. I mean, we didn't really buy much at the mall. It was just kind of hangout type of thing. We didn't get to do it often, but when we did, it was kind of nice, and that was the one thing we looked forward to. Well, I now live in an area where that's really not so readily available, and who can, honestly, who can afford them these days? So, this way, I also know what's in it, and I enjoy working with dough. I always have, so... I could sit back and create those memories in my mind while I'm sitting here making my own. So this is about where I need it to be. And turn it over and check it out right quick. Let's see the elasticity. Bounces back really nice. Get it to smoothness. And this should be done to where we're just going to now let this rise for an hour and we're going to grease our bowl and at that point I'm going to go do my farm work I will come back and we will finish working out these beautiful pretzels I cannot wait to have so let me get this in the bowl we'll get this set aside go get my farm work done and we will be right back Okay, y'all, so our dough is doubled, but in the meantime, I've got my oven preheating at 425 degrees. I've got my uh, parchment line baking sheet, and I'm also, now you want to do this carefully. My water is hot, so I've got 10 cups of water in here, and I'm going to be using two-thirds cups of baking soda. But you want to add this slowly and gently because this will bubble up really good and foam. So I take it slowly doing this just to add it. It will settle down as it starts to boil. But in that first thing so you don't get it just spewing everywhere, just take it slowly. And this is important to have this bath. 
Another thing in the recipe they do not add, I am going to be adding, is I have one egg whisked with a, about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of water. That's where the beautiful pretzel coloring comes from, so I'm going to suggest doing that for an egg wash afterwards. Well, this is coming up to a boil. We're going to go ahead and start making up our pretzels. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, and I'm going to bring you an angle for you to watch on this part. Okay, y'all, so I'm going to bring this down, and pull my dough out. Now I'm going to cut this down into eight pieces. And this is where you can make eight soft pretzels. Um, I may just go ahead and do half and half. I'll do four soft pretzels. And then the rest of them will probably be pretzel bites. I'm going to go ahead and cut these down into my eights. And eight. Alright, so I'm going to take this in my bowl. Set these aside. Cover this up while I'm waiting. And there it's going to cut just a little bit more because it kind of jipped me on that one. Same with that. We'll go put it in that one. All right. So now we're going to cover this up while those are waiting. And I'm going to go ahead and make up my pretzels because these will just stick on the pan. So I'm going to take and roll this out into about an 8 to 9 inch long um, rope. Make sure I roll it out good. Oops. You don't have to be perfect at this, believe it or not. I mean, anything, it'll work. So... Now I'm going to take my twist, fold it over and twist my edges, and then bring it down and pinch at the ends so that I get my nice pretzel wrap. And that one did not want to stick together, so I'm going to redo that really good, just like so. And then I'm going to set that aside. Go on to my next one. Pull this down. Cover these up. I don't want them drying out. Sorry about that, y'all. I need to move that. There we go. Now I won't be bumping you everywhere. This water is just about ready to soak these. Now these will be soaked anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. I am more than likely going to go with 20 seconds to do this. Even though the recipe said to do it for 30. Now bring it up to a U, hold it over, hold it over again, take both ends, draw it down, pinch your end right there at this end, and that's how you make, and then just shape your pretzel into your form. And then you have your soft pretzel, just like so. Now when you go after this, and I will tell you, you will have to reshape these once you get them on the pan. Because when they come out of here, they're really soft. So you'll have to reshape them. Now the pretzel bites won't be as hard or tedious. These, Those are going to be so super simple. These are really not hard to make, y'all. It does, uh, just like everything else, even in bread baking, it takes time. That's it. 
but to me it's time well worth it again bring this up flip flip toss and pinch just like so I'm gonna go ahead and get these done make sure this water starts boiling I'm only doing four of these shapes and then when I come back We'll get these done, get them in their baking soda bath, get them ready for the pan, and then I'll show you how to do the pretzel bites. Okay, y'all, so now we got our baking soda water up to a boil. Now we're going to go ahead and give our soft pretzels a baking soda bath. These, I'm going to go ahead, like I said, I'm going to do this for 20 seconds. You can put this in a baking dish if you want to as well. Um, just make sure that you coat these. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this in here. I'm going to make sure that these, I'm not going to do too many at one time. I'll probably fit about three in here. And then I'm going to cook these and count. Four, five, about halfway, turn them. And before I bring them out, I'll turn them again, make sure they're shaken off, and put them on my baking sheet. Ah, uh -huh. one to stick. I'm gonna get these off of here. Turn this over. And that's it. Now, at this point, I gotta do this kinda in a hurry, so I'm gonna wait on this one for just a second because we're gonna go ahead with these. I'm gonna reshape it too. So now with these, you can't see them all. Let me angle this for you. There we go. So now I'm gonna turn this here, reshape my little, well, turn it over. Reshape them, be gentle with this as much as I possibly can. Just like so. Now I'm going to take my egg wash and I'm going to brush each one of my pretzels. This, remember, is where you're going to get that golden brown look. Some don't do this, some do. But I'm going to because it is proven the last time. Now I've never done the German one, so we'll be testing these. But for my other pretzels, I had done it with this egg wash and they turned out so beautiful. And now since I have the egg wash and they're still wet, what little, my goodness, I've got maybe a quarter of a cup of kosher salt left and I have not been able to find any. So I'm just going to sprinkle each one with a little bit of my kosher salt. Now if I have to, I will start using um, my sea salt, but I did order two boxes. I Thankfully I did find some. So... I ordered two three pound boxes on Amazon so they should last me a little while. And go ahead and do this to this one now. Flip it over halfway through my count. Flip it over again, take it out, strain it, and place this on my pan. Again, doing the same thing as before, readjusting my little pretzel, coming back and egg washing it lightly. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with my kosher salt while they're still wet. Just like that. Now, we have the pretzel bites, and they will be somewhat the same thing, but not quite. These are a little bit easier to make because they do come in a form. 
The pretzel bites will be slightly different, but we're going to keep it on this same pan. So let's go do with our pretzel bites. At the same time, I am actually uh, frying up some bacon as well. That is to go with my cracked chicken. So, and I'm also going to use part of that bacon for uh, my potato salad as well. So, the same aspect with these is you're going to roll them out just like you would like you're going to make the other pretzels about the same length and size only this time you're not going to form them this time we're going to do something much different we're just going to come by and pop them into pieces just like so about an inch and a half two inches at the most just come back pop them like so I guess these can be a lot easier they're just a little smaller so now to get these done I will pop them on my little spoon same way I do the um, other pretzels I'm just gonna pop these in here 20 seconds And now I do this. Now see with these I didn't have to necessarily turn them over like I did the bigger ones here. All I just just pop them down into the um, baking soda bath to make sure that they all got coated. And then again, just like I did the other ones, I take them and divide them through here, separate them just a little bit. Come back and brush them with my egg wash, sprinkle them with salt, and these will be ready to go. So now I'm just going to take and brush my little bites, just like so. Y'all, I can't wait for this. I really can't. My mouth is drilling because I remember those taste so much. And then take a little bit of my kosher salt and sprinkle it on each little bite. And these are so easy. You can freeze these up to three, maybe four months if they last that long. And you can basically keep them refrigerated too. But um, I'm actually going to freeze mine. The reason I choose to do that is because I am making so many and I know myself seriously know myself very well that if they're readily available and in my face I am going to grab them but if they're in the freezer I kind of have to work for it so it gives me a chance to portion myself and uh, so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and finish these off and we will be right back okay y'all so into the oven we go these are going to go in there for about eight to ten minutes in 450 degree oven let's see what happens let's see if we can get some beautiful pretzels soft pretzels and pretzel bites so we will be back in about eight to ten minutes okay y'all i had to do an up close and personal with you on these Oh my lord, these look good. They just came out of the oven, oven so the next step we do is I'm going to set it up because we need to brush each little bad boy with some melted butter. So now we take our melted butter here and we just brush the tops of every one of these from the bites to the pretzels. Y'all, these little dowels are the reason why I freeze things. I know me. I know me and if you could smell this oh my goodness 
homemade is better anyways I absolutely love them and I know what's in it now I am going to test some of these bites because I want to see if using that bread flour versus all purpose because I know what they taste like with all purpose but I do want to try them with the uh, bread flour that we used and see if there's a difference to it and see that golden color I was telling you about by using the egg wash usually if you don't use that egg wash they won't come out this golden like a pretzel looks I've even made these y'all as pretzel buns and oh my god they're good so let me go ahead and get everything set up we've got them all brushed buttered ready to go I'm gonna let these cool for just a minute set up and we're gonna try some of these okay y'all so I have some nacho cheese that I'm dipping mine in you can choose mustard you can choose basically if you want cinnamon sugar on yours you can do whatever you want um, I'm trying not to add as much sweetness to mine I mean I'm already eating a high carb thing so and I'll monitorize how much of it I eat but I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these I do want to see if the bread flour makes a difference I'm just gonna dip this in my nacho cheese <laughs> Lord have mercy y'all Oh boy. All right. Beautiful. It's got, oh my gosh, it has that definite pretzel taste. It has the chew, and that would be due to the baking soda bath. It does not taste like overabundance of baking soda like some of the recipes I've tried do. Um, bread flour worked absolutely great in this. It's definitely a soft pretzel. It can definitely, oh Lord, that mercy get me in trouble. Hang on, I'll be right back. Mm. Okay, y'all, I had to put it away. I tried two pieces and <laughs> that was perfect. Um, yes, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Once these cool off, they will be divided up into portions and they will be frozen and I will use them periodically they are absolutely fantastic and you know I'm going to share that recipe with you along with the process on how to do this in the meantime the cracked chicken is smelling beautiful it is cooking um, I so far I put my bacon in it I have uh, added some more chicken pieces to this so I probably won't show the end of this process on the crock pot on this video here but I will tell you what I'm fixing to add to it is, like I told you, I did the bacon bits. I'm going to be adding some extra sharp cheddar to mine, and I'm going to top it with some scallions so or green onion tops. So that's what we're going to do, and then we're going to have it in on a low-carb bread or a bun. <clears throat> These pretzel bites are going to be amazing winter snack every once in a while I may choose maybe twice a month to have a pretzel you know I, and I'm okay with that I told you in my past video I'm done stressing y'all I'm going to enjoy life without being stupid in it um, and I can do that so these are part of my enjoyments that I am coming up with and I also have some I'm looking forward to trying a lot of low carb uh, cake in a mug I have never done that before so and I've been looking into it sometimes my husband and I just like a treat and if I can come up with some that are low carb hallelujah low sugar or no sugar that is absolutely great for both of us now I have seen where some were trying to make soft pretzels for low carb honestly I may try that someday they look kind of grainy to me, but we'll see. I may try it. We'll have to see. I think most of them were made out of fathead dough. And honestly, I'm at the point in life where things are getting super expensive, y'all, for me to order kosher salt. Now, I will tell you again, um, 
I had maybe a quarter of a cup in a big tall container that was full of kosher salt. That's all I have left. So I decided I was going to go look on Walmart and, you know, look to see if they had any in stock. They've not had any in stock for months. And I thought, this isn't normal. So I went on Amazon. Again, Morton's, I don't know what's going on, but Morton's kosher salt is not available. And if you can find kosher salt, I found uh, a diamond brand that's two uh, three-pound boxes for $24, y'all. That is unheard of for salt. So $24.99, I got six pounds of kosher salt. That better be good is all I can say because I'm going to make it last. I'm not ordering none anytime soon from here, so, and I will use it sparingly, just like I did with my pretzels. There was just enough. I didn't have to overdo it, and it was beautiful. So, um, yeah, if you need kosher salt, I'm going to tell you, you're going to order it, because you're not going to find it hardly anywhere else, and if you do, it's going to be expensive. I am seeing... Today, I, I'm starting to see some things on the shelves. Anything that of the cheaper brands seem to be low in shortages, per se, versus the name brand expensive stuff. So, these seem to be our selections of choosings. I cannot wait to go back to Aldi's. When I go back to Aldi's, I will be checking and see if they may happen to have kosher salt and a few other things that I can't seem to find locally here of off-brand or cheaper values. I mean, look folks, cheaper values are no different than the name brand stuff in the most part. So some things I do agree the name brand tastes better, but for most things it doesn't. It's the same thing. So pick and choose your battles wisely, but know that things are starting to become quote unquote unavailable. So, in the meantime, I will see you all again as I come up with some various other ideas for soups, casseroles, crockpot meals, uh, cakes in a mug, and so many fun things that I'm looking forward to this fall and this winter. And I look forward to sharing them with you. I will put the pretzel recipe in the description box for you along with the instructions. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and I'll throw in the cracked chicken for you as well. Um, I'll give you the full recipe on it and you guys can play around with it if you want to. So until next time, much love. I love you all dearly. You make me smile every time I speak to most of you. So thank you very much. And we will see you again from Parton's Heritage Homestead.